Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Edouard's 148th scale MiG 21R. Really interested in this one, so let's take a look. So then, to get this one ticking along, we're going to be starting off in the front end of the MiG 21. Specifically, as you can see, I'm building up here the front nose wheel bay. It's a rather straightforward piece of the build. A bulkhead goes into place, two of those parts at the front and then two sidewalls. Once that is completed and also the glue has dried, I can flip that subassembly over and start working on the cockpit. I initially fit this piece onto the bottom. This is going to be used for the later installed seat. The control column and also the rudder pedals can be fitted at this stage as well. Then we can move on to building up two of the sidewalls for the MiG-21's cockpit. Initially, these two kind of interlocking pieces will slide together, a little bit fiddly, but definitely stick with it. Then you get the option of using two of these top pieces, one of which is going to be molded with all of the dials and buttons in, and the other one is flat, which is one that I used for the later installed photo etch. The final rear bulkhead is slotted into position, as well I used the fuselage to ensure the correct angle, and then we can start getting some primer onto this build. I'm going to be using Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. This was sprayed onto all of the parts that have currently been assembled or snipped off of the sprue. So then the first bit of colour to go onto the MiG is going to be Mr. Hobby's H46. This is an emerald green colour and the reason that I've chosen it is because I think it is going to match the photo etch as well as possible. The paint itself has been thinned about 75% thinner to 25% paint and it is being sprayed onto the cockpit at around about 0.8 bar. So that is about 12 psi. I initially mottled into areas which are flat and don't have too many details on them, leaving areas of raised detail slightly darker and then blended everything back in to give a modulated and varying tone to the paint. I then got my paintbrush out and picked out the very minimal details which are actually moulded in at this point and that is more because I'm going to be using photo etch. Two photo etch frets included in this kit, one of them being coloured and one of them being brass. The coloured one is very nicely printed, all of the details and dials are very precise and if you wanted to read them I'm sure you could, and they all slot together very nicely. Once the sidewalls had been all photo etched up, they could be slotted into each side of the fuselage. As you can see the detail is absolutely exquisite and far better than I could do with my measly little brush. Moving the assembly now to another part, we're going to be taking a look at the wheel well. Edward used some rather nifty engineering here, utilising a raised ridge to ensure that two of the inner pieces slot into place without any issues. Many other detailed parts are now secured into the wheel well. This includes some pipes and also some other bits and bobs, which I'm not too sure what they are. But when they are then secured, here is what the wheel well was looking like. Very nicely detailed and very simple to put together. I could then go on to prime the wheel well assembly and then paint it in Mr. Colors C27. This is a zinc chromate primer sort of color, and then I'm also going to douse it in two layers of chipping fluid. On top of this, I could then spray down Mr. Color C60, which is RLM02, which is the designated color callout for the wheel wells. I then took a dampened cotton bud and started to activate all the chipping fluid, then came in with a cocktail stick and started to do some very direct chipping to reveal that underlying zinc chromate color. Sometimes I find that I cannot fully explain how these products work in the videos. This is why I am incredibly excited to announce that I am now going to be all set up at Hannant's London on the weekends working and filming my latest projects. Hannant's London is my local based model shop and it is just outside of the RAF Hendon Museum. It is stacked with all of the modelling products you could ever need and now I am in there directly showing you how to use them and them generally in use. So, if you are ever interested in either taking a close up look at certain products, talking to a variety of experienced modellers, or having a nosy around at what will next be on the channel, make your way down to Hannant's London. Their details are on screen now and I cannot wait to see you down there. So, I've been cracking on with the rear end of the MiG-21 now, specifically the whole exhaust and engine pipe. As you've seen, it is all slotted together absolutely perfectly and there is an ample amount of detail in there. Once the subassembly is complete, it slots into one side of the fuselage. Now I can bring all of the subassemblies previously painted up and completed and coat them in a single layer of VMS's satin varnish. This then gives me a great base to do some oil work on. Initially, what I've done is I've taken Starship Filth Oil Brusher and diluted it about 90% using white spirit. 
That has then been dabbed onto the outside or into areas of detail around the model and now I'm using a clean brush doused in white spirit to blend it into the surroundings. After I've done this throughout, I'm left with a very nice shaded and also grimy looking effect. After I've given it a few hours to dry and recoated it in a layer of VMS's satin varnish, the cockpit floor assembly can be slotted into one half of the fuselage and then I can turn my attention to the nose. As you can see, the nose has been filled with liquid gravity and that is just very, very small tungsten balls which act as a nose weight. After this has also been slotted into the half of the fuselage, I can take the remaining half of the fuselage and sandwich everything in between. Lucky for me, there was no gaps or any major seams which had to be sorted out, so I could move on. This time we've moved on to building up more of the wheel well. Seemingly the wheel wells have taken up the majority of this build so far. Initially that very important part slots into position. Later on in the build this will be used to secure and give a very strong fitment to the landing gear legs themselves. The surrounding sidewalls are slotted and cemented into position and then the previously assembled main section of the wheel well is then slotted in between. After that is cured and dried and I'm happy with the fitment, I can then mount the lower half of the wings to the rest of the fuselage. I can then bring the top half of the wing and mate it with the lower half of the wing. It's good to note that I did actually find myself getting rid of the locating pins as I found they had a negative effect on the fitment. So maybe try it out if you're struggling with that part of the build. Turning my attention back to the front of the MiG, we're now just building up certain aspects of it. Parts of the anti-glare shield and other random bits and bobs, which is just trying to build up the shape. I believe they've sectioned it down this way so that they can produce multiple variants of the MiG-21 with one tooling. The gigantic tail fin can also be slotted in at this stage. It's good to note this is actually made out of two separate pieces. They once again had their locating pins snipped off to ensure a more positive fitment, but unfortunately there is a seam present which has to be sorted out. The flaps and also the ailerons themselves can be slotted into position. Those aspects as well are unfortunately not positionable to my knowledge, or at least in the instructions they are not pointed out as being or having the ability to be moved. Now just moving on to put the final parts onto this build before we can move on to doing some primer. This includes of course the underside pylons. All four of these can be slotted into position with relative ease, but I would recommend going up about 0.1 or 0.05 of a mil with your pin vise, just so you don't snap anything. Then the absolutely huge pitot tube that sticks out the front of this aircraft. I don't know about you, but I really think it adds to the whole aesthetic of the aircraft. Very wacky and long, I think is the best way to describe it. The glass can also be cemented on at this stage. I found it to be perfectly transparent for all of the parts that I was using, and it can then be masked off using the kit supplied masks. After ripping a sponge to pieces and then protecting other aspects of the model, it can receive a generous coating of Mr. Surface Primer 1000 Grey. After that had cured and revealed to me any imperfections in the paintwork which were then sorted, I could then spray down Mr. Colour C66. After all of the designated areas which needed to be this colour had been masked off, I can move on to the main painting. For this one, I've chosen to do a Cuban MiG-21. I personally think that the colours work so well on this one, however, they are very unique. Green, I'm very comfortable working with, however, blue, I wasn't too sure. So after choosing an appropriate colour and feeling the pressure upon my shoulders, I just pushed right on. And the reason behind that is, of course, because everyone knows diamonds are made under pressure. With that horrendously cringy quote out of the way, what am I doing on screen? So I've taken the paint, I've thinned it 60% with Mr. Leveling Thinner, 40% paint, spraying down at one bar, and I've sprayed the appropriate size and shape of the blue aspects of the camouflage. And the reason being is because Mac Models is an environmentally friendly channel and we don't want to waste paint. Now that I have the appropriate size, I want to start breaking up this blue colour and making it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to be using this Ursuchi van der Rosten stencil, which is being more commonly used on the channel at the moment. And this is just going to create irregular patterns in the paint, which you should hopefully see in the end result. Whilst I've got the white in the brush, which is what I was using for the stencil, I can bring my pressure down just a tad more and start to do some highlighting work. I'm highlighting in the interiors of many of the panels, but then also, as you'll hopefully see in the next clip, starting to gradient off of some of the panel lines. All this is going to do is create lots of different tones of that blue color. 
So after I'd worked around the entirety of the aircraft, repeating this process, this is what I was left with. However, these were all highlights, so what this would have ended up doing was made the overall colour of the blue far too bright. So we've done the highlights, now we need the midtones, and to do that we're going to be using Mr. Colour's C392, which is almost an intermediate blue colour. And the whole purpose of using this intermediate blue colour is, as I said, to start bringing the overall exposure of this blue back down. The intermediate blue by itself won't bring it the whole way down, but it will be a start. In terms of how I'm spraying this colour, it is very similar to how I sprayed the white. The only difference is I'm going to be thinning it about 60 or 65% with Mr. Rapid Thinner, and of course 30 odd percent of paint, and it will be sprayed down at about 0.7 bar. This is just going to give me slightly more control. And the final step in terms of shading for this blue is going to be using the deep tones and that is going to be done using Miss Colors C328 which is a dark blue color and it's going to be sprayed in the exact same way as the previous colors before it. The only difference here is where am I directing that paint and on the whole I'm going to direct that paint straight along any of the recess details. This includes rivet lines and panel lines and the reason behind this is because that is naturally where shadows would fall and this deep tone is trying to on the one hand bring the paint back down to a somewhat normal colour, but then on the other hand, start to create some fake shadows. So the only thing left to do now was blend everything together, and to do that I'm going to be using the original colour, which I believe was Mr. Colour's C323, and thinning it like normal and spraying it somewhat like normal. I did make a minor oopsie here, I think I was a little bit too heavy on the paint, and I reduced that shading effect just that little bit too much. However, this was the final result, and considering I don't work with blue, or a light blue that much anyway, I was quite happy with the result. Now into some more common ground, it's going to be working with green. The first thing to do was outline the camo. After inspecting many, many Cuban MiG-21s in preparation for this build, I noticed that on the whole, they had more of a soft edged camo. So in this case, what I decided to do was instead freehand rather than mask off. What I ended up doing was taking the crown head off of my Pro Convoy and starting to get really close to the model with it. This gave me far more control. I also thinned my paint that little bit more and brought my air pressure down that little bit more as well. So in the end, I was working at about 0.6 bar and about 85% thinned. After I traced out the boundary, I spent a small amount of time filling in the central areas. And this was the result that I was left with. It was then a simple case of pretty much repeating the steps I had just done. Starting off with the white colour and going around doing all of the highlights, picking out many of the panels, moving on then to the intermediate green colour, however this one was pretty much just the exact same colour so maybe a small waste of time here, but nonetheless I'm sure you'll be able to see very minor tonal differences but emphasis on minor. And then after seeing this, instead of making the decision to use a very dark uh, green to do the final shading, I just opted for a straight black. At this stage, I took the opportunity to bring the blue up to a more shaded standard as well, because when I was looking at it, I just thought that the green is going to look so shaded and the blue is going to look so flat. And I was trying to make sure that everything was uniform in terms of weathering. So once everything had been shaded with that black, I could blend everything back in. Learning from my previous mistakes, I thinned my paint to potentially an excessive level to ensure I didn't over blend anything in and didn't lose all of this shading which I'd spent quite a long time on in the end. Once I'd allowed everything to dry, this is what the MIG was looking like and I think reshading everything really managed to pull this build back as I think it was very very slowly starting to slip away from me so very happy I made that decision. As no more painting is going to be happening on the top side of this aircraft I could pull the masking tape off of that bright green aspect. Turning the model onto its back now and focusing on the underside everything initially receives a uniform coat of Mr. Colors C324 which is this light creamy grey. Although not filmed, it received the exact same processes as the top surfaces, highlights, a couple of intermediate tones, and then using that black just to do all of the final post shading itself. Once blended in and dry, this is the overall effect that we were working with. I think it matches the general vibe of the top half very well, uh, leading to a very uniform finish. 
After what felt like using half a roll of masking tape, the exhaust was all sorted and ready to be worked on. Initially receiving a very fine coat of super fine silver 2 or super metallic 201, it could then be post shaded using straight flat black. As I wanted the super metallic colour not to be too shiny and perhaps a little bit more tarnished, I chose not to give it a glossy black base. After being very basically post shaded and the masking tape removed, this is the effect that I was left with and I think it's quite simple, but it works very well with the airframe. But what do you think? That just about concludes the painting for this one, so everything can then be secured and sealed using Mr. Super Clear's gloss. This was left overnight just to cure and harden before then going in and using the decals. These are the new era of Edouard decals, so after last week I was a little bit concerned. Lucky for me, they went down absolutely beautifully and I even had the motivation to peel every single one of them. It is very satisfying doing this and I think it does make the decal look a little bit better, however I don't know if I'm completely sold. Please do let me know down below if you are to peel or not to peel with Edouard decals. I would love to know and give a reason while you're at it. They can then be resealed with that GX100 Super Gloss and we can go on to some weathering. Initially I'm going to be using Mr. Weathering Colors Ground Brown diluted 50% with White Spirit can then be used as a panel wash. It is dotted onto all of the panels and then any excess is wiped away with a clean towel. As I wanted my upcoming oil work to really be quite grimy and grotty, I needed a better base to work off of. So I'm going to be employing VMS's Satin Varnish. And as you can see on screen now, this is really going to give the oils something much better to grip to. And in terms of oils, I'm going to be using Ammo Mig's oil brushes. I'm going to use black, I'm going to use white, and I'm also going to use Starship Filth. In the following clip, you're only going to see me use this Starship Filth color. However, I've repeated this process throughout the airframe using the black and the white. What I first do is take the oil brusher and stipple it along the edges of any panels which I want to make a little bit dirtier. For this stage you can use any odd brush, you just need to get the oil onto the actual aircraft. Then I'm going to be using a flat headed and dry brush to start blending everything into the, the, the right sort of position. Once I'm in an okay position with the oils, I'm going to be using a dampened in white spirit flat headed brush again, but this time I'm going to be manipulating the oils around and starting to remove any which I don't like. After I've repeated this process throughout the airframe with all three colours, you can really see that it just looks a little bit more grimy and used, and that is exactly what I wanted. The next product which I'm going to use requires even more grip, so I coated the entire model, this time in VMS's matte varnish. The product which I'm talking about is Ammo Mix shaders and what these are is pretty much just diluted watercolours which you can put in your airbrush and spray. For me the main usage of these is creating post shading on top of any of the decals without having to use any oils and start mucking around with too many of the colours. Also if I don't like it I can just get some water and wipe all the effect off. The only downside that you might have is the fact that you do really need a matte base for these things to grip and to work. So if you're not a fan of matte bases, that might not be the product for you. With weathering concluded, we can move on to the final assembly stage. First things to go on is going to be the landing gear legs. The two main landing gear legs slot into place eventually very securely and the nose wheel also slots into place as well. Wheel weld doors follow before then moving on to securing all of the ordnance. Seemingly, the MiG-21 doesn't have the most extensive amount of things that it could carry, however, I opted to put two fuel tanks on, this centerline pod, and then two 3RS missiles. I think I've said that right. That concludes the underside, so I can put it on its legs for the first time, and now have a look at the seat itself. The seat actually uses probably 50% of the photo etch in this kit, and I'll try to put as much of it on there as possible, before then sliding it into position. The final things to do then was remove the masks from the canopies, which you can see has already been done, fit the canopy, and then fit one or two more pieces of photo edge. And that about finishes this build up, so thank you very very much for watching, I really do hope that you've enjoyed my step back into the jet age. Uh, enjoy the final photos and videos, and I will see you next time guys, bye bye.